welcome to the show. This week we are on a road trip. We're going to head down south of here to Knox County, Indiana, and we are going to go to a local food pantry who are also dealing with disaster aid. They help with disasters, hurricanes, tornadoes, all over the country, and it is a really cool place. So, Let's head down the road. We'll do 10 seconds of that. And what is your title? Chief Operating Officer. Che oh, you're the big chief. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> you're so, yeah, I think it's more of a jack of all trades and master of none is what I, is, is was that I, would, what I would call it. <laughs> so, yeah, I've been on the board of directors for a little over four years here, helping his hands and been friends and brothers in Christ with Scott for a lot longer than that. So um, he's been on me for a while to try and make this happen. I don't like, but uh, mm -hmm. Scott is very good at going out and ministering to people and whether it's cleaning up a, a mess from a hurricane, a tornado, or whatever it is, uh, he's better in person and, and loves to do that. And mm -hmm. can be on the road, go preach at a church on Sunday, and we need somebody here kind of to run the day-to-day -day business, whether it's uh, food give out like we're having right now, or depot, or um, just there's always something. You never know what's going to walk in that door. So, yeah, that's what, you know, I've been at the bank and met with donors and had lunch with a different donor today, so there's just a lot yeah, of... Yeah, helping, helping his hands. Uh, how did it start? You know, what's going on? So in, in 1993, we took our first group of college students. Uh, that's when the Mississippi flooded uh, on the Illinois and the Missouri side. And we took uh, multiple trips of students uh, that year to help out with not just sandbagging and passing out water and food, but return trips of basically mucking out houses to get them ready uh, to be basically put back together. Uh, in that time, it wasn't nothing like uh, a light bulb going off, going, oh, we should do this as a, as a full-blown organization. Uh, nothing like that at all. It was just, let's take some students and go help people. Mm -hmm. uh, fast forward, we, we did multiple trips to different areas. Uh, it wasn't until Hurricane Katrina hit that we really increased those trips. And then, basically, uh, in, in the year of 2011, it was really like God was kind of stirring in me, just that idea of doing more than what we were doing. And then, basically, I tell everybody, because I always want to know that pivotal point. And so, uh, April 27th, Tuscaloosa, Alabama was hit with a, with a tornado, and we were down there uh, within 8 to 12 hours after it hit with, with students. Uh, my son, who was 13th time, went on that trip, and uh, we did, you know, all different kinds of, of, of work that, that trip down there. And on our way back, uh, he's in the truck with me with a few other college guys. And, of course, I'm just kind of messing with him a little bit, asking him, you know, if he thinks he did any good. You know, he's being, you know, being 13 years old. And, um, and I told him, I said, you know, you've allowed God to drop you in here like a rock in water. And I asked him, I said, what happens when you drop a rock in water? His answer was, it sinks. That's just the way my son is. And so I said, yeah. But I said, it's that ripple effect that goes out. And, and I said, because of you allowing God to drop you in, the effect, you'll have no idea in the world how, how far that will go. Mm -hmm. And we talked some more uh, you know, with the guys in the truck coming back about just the whole idea of being in the hands and feet of Jesus down there. And just out of the blue, my son just says, Dad, we were helping his hands down there. So, so you fast forward, um, Joplin, Missouri gets hit May 22nd. And I tell everybody at 4.23 a.m. May 23rd is when helping his hands. Well, earlier you had talked about um, counseling in a way, uh, you know, people to talk to and pray with and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Now, are there counselors that come and volunteer or we've had, pastors we've had, we've had or, some. We've had you know. Some. A lot of times we'll get, we'll get pastors who'll come on mm -hmm. trips and things like that. When, we, when mm -hmm. we have that, we consider them what we call our field chaplain. Mm -hmm. And so their, their job or their part of the whole thing is basically, you know, dealing with the families 
yeah. as we're trying to do the cleanup part. Mm -hmm. um, we always tell all of our volunteers, if the, if the homeowner stops you and is talking to you, the most important thing you'll do that day is to interact with that homeowner. But we try to have those folks there, those those field chaplains, to be mm -hmm. able to be there to, to love on the families, to listen to the families, mm -hmm. to pray with the families. Everybody processes what they are going through differently. Mm -hmm. And so it don't matter if it's a few months or a few years, there's always that that process that goes on. Yeah, yeah. And it's always good to have somebody to talk to. Exactly. You know, in, exactly. The, in the middle of everything, you exactly, know. Exactly, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, cool. Well, I know that you have somewhere that you have to be, <laughs> so we're going to wrap this up okay. for now. Uh, <laughs> Noreen, <laughs> Noreen is pretty much in charge of things back here. So. No. Oh, cool. I mean, she really um, so is. I'm She's on the board. I'm a volunteer, and I'm on the board. Oh, yeah? So how long have you been volunteering? Uh, let's see. Ooh, probably uh, a day or two. Five, five or six years. Five or six years. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. That is yeah. pretty cool. So, and oh. you're on the board as well. Yes, I'm on the board of yeah. directors. Yeah. And when we had the homeless shelter, mm -hmm. I was in charge of the homeless shelter. When I first started, I I worked at the employment office, work one. Oh yeah. And I did resumes for people that was over at the shelter. That's how I got started. Oh, wow. So, well, yeah, that is pretty cool. Moved on. Yeah. So why do you stay? Yeah. Why do you stay here? Why do you keep doing this? It's addictive. Uh, I, I'm i here on earth to serve people. Uh -huh. I, I know that and, and serve God. And that's why I'm here. Well, that is awesome. That is awesome. And God is number one. Absolutely. I don't Absolutely. care what anybody says. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So this is pretty cool. So we're going back on the tour now. Okay. All right. <laughs> and then here is where they'll bring, they bring the stuff from here and they put it in here and then we load the baskets. Before COVID, before COVID, people would come in here and fill their own baskets and get, be able to pick out the certain mm -hmm. things they needed. Well, that's a no-go anymore. Right. And it's, it's a, kind of a double-edged sword because it would be where they would come in and get their stuff and go. Well, now we're, we're having community giveaways that are 250, 260 families being fed mm -hmm. in two hours. Well, there's no way we could do that in here. Oh, no. So we get volunteers in here to carry it out to them. So nice. uh, while, while it is different with COVID, mm -hmm. uh, we are serving more people, which is passing the word of God to everybody else. Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's pretty cool. they got freezers. Yeah. So you've got pretty much the same as like a grocery store, it looks like. Oh, pretty yeah, close, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this is like packaged cheese and eggs and uh, frozen milk mm -hmm. because it gets outdated. And so you got to freeze it before that happens. Right. So then we got, like these are all Nathan hot dogs that come from ballparks all over the country that they couldn't use. Right. So they're now giving these out. So there's, there's probably three pounds of chicken and six pounds of hot dogs in each bag that we give away to each family. Like I said, frozen milk and then all of the dry goods here. Mm -hmm. And we got eggs, uh, grated cheese, uh, jalapeno French bread, things yeah. of that nature. This is just all the stuff that comes into the deep bone and goes back out. Uh -huh. So, So how often do you get a truck? Every Tuesday. Every Tuesday. Oh, nice. You know, I say that. I'll have to check to be sure. Let me ask, <laughs> let me ask one. Hey, uh, how often do we get a truck? Is it the first Tuesday of the month? Mid Midwest, one time in the, the semi. Okay. Then Catholic Charities is twice a month. Okay. So there you go. So three times a month. Catholic Charities at Terre Haute. Oh, they're, yeah. They're part of Feeding America. Right, right. So. And well, that was my next question if yeah, you was part of that. Occasionally yeah. Occasionally, if they have an excess amount of food, they will call us and ask us if we can take another truck load, mm -hmm. which we do if we have room. Nice, so, nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is, this is just amazing. And when Bill called me, you know, out of the blue, he says, you want to come and film this? I'm going, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, is, this is probably, this is the biggest food warehouse that I've seen in any of the food pantries that I have visited, uh -huh. and I've visited quite a few, this, wow. is, this is the biggest, you know, for a local mm -hmm. food pantry. Yeah. So I, I'm guessing we're, we're most likely the largest food pantry in Knox County. 
Nice. So, you know, I know Salvation Army does mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. too. Oh, yeah, but they, they don't have money. Uh, but yeah. no, no. And, and, uh, it's not taken away from them. No, no. Yeah. I mean, because we all, we all serve a purpose. Right, right. You know, well, this this so. is awesome. I think this is great. Yeah. This is great. Yeah, it, it is. Thanks, okay. This is a thanks. fantastic place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks, Noreen. Uh -huh. So, I know it looks kind of backwards, but I'll show you kind of the logistics flow of it, okay? Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so these are both frozen. They have frozen foods in them. I don't have the keys to get in them. But That's okay. So they're 53-foot uh, trailers uh -huh. that have frozen food in them. And so we just grab from here, take up there, mm -hmm. to distribute out the door. Nice. Okay? So then when one of these goes empty, then another one comes in and fills it back up. So Wow. And here we are at the map with Scott who uh, is going to show us, I mean, what's all the, the pins in there for, Scott? Is that Santa's route or what? Well, it could be. It could be Santa's route. No. <laughs> so what we've got here, of course, is the map of the United States. And, and different, different colors and different, and different objects mean different things. So all the little push pins that you see, all the little round ones, those are communities that we've built wheelchair ramps in. Either wheelchair ramps or low-rise steps for, for families. Uh, who have a, uh, somebody in their family that, that can't get in or out of their house very well. Uh -huh. All the red flags are disasters that we have been to uh, over the years. And then, of course, then uh, there are some yellow flags, uh, one in Townsend, Tennessee, uh, Wallace, North Carolina, and San Antonio, Texas. Those yellow flags are actual plants of ours. That means that we have a group of volunteers there that are ready to go at any given time when things happen. And then there's some white flags, and you really can't see those very well, but there's some white flags on the map, and those are states that we're just simply praying that, that God would raise up uh, uh, a group, an individual, a church, a business that not only believes in what we're doing, but they want to be a part of, of what we're doing and becoming a plant. And so, so they're kind of scattered throughout the, throughout the United States. Oh, that is awesome. So I see there's like a majority here in the, in the southern Indiana uh, region mm -hmm. so and we're here in Knox County yes. with the uh, helping hands and you guys are awesome um, you know Bill has given me a tour of the place okay. and it is it is so cool I mean it's like a big old grocery store there you go there you go that's, and that's just one part of what we do volunteers well, in a church down there mm -hmm. that that have helped us in other disaster areas mm -hmm. and so what that means is is uh, they're catch. They're they're checking out the weather. They're kind of keeping track of what's going on in their state mm -hmm. as well as in the surrounding states in their area. Tennessee is the same way. In uh, mm -hmm. in towns in Tennessee, they not only uh, check the weather and things in Tennessee, but they'll do a circle basically of Alabama, Georgia, and the Carolinas, of course, all the way through Kentucky mm -hmm. to see. And then, of course, then our Wallace, North Carolina. Uh, plant basically the the eastern side is what they do. What that basically means is people think that I, I sit around all day and watch the weather, and I do not. <laughs> but it takes uh, folks like that to be able to let us know what's going on. And because so so give you an example. So let's say something happens. We'll say something happens in Houston, Texas, just kind of like Hurricane mm -hmm. Harvey a few mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. So our guys in San Antonio would let us know that something has happened there. And then what happens after that is. The question comes back to them, first off, are you able to respond? And if you are, then they will. If they're not, then that means we're going to try to find some other volunteers that can respond to that disaster. Mm -hmm. um, now, they may have already made the connection for us or contacts in the Houston area. If they have, then we'll piggyback off that. If they haven't, then we'll do that. And so it's, it's kind of like this. People always ask me, uh, do you think you'll ever not ask for new volunteers? And I always go, no, because, because one person that volunteers and helps in this disaster may not be able to help in the next disaster. Mm -hmm. And so we're constantly trying to build that volunteer pool uh, that we have. And so, and so we've, we've, we have responded, um, I mean, you can tell, quite a few different states that we have worked in, um, in disaster areas. And we've made connections with with volunteers in those mm -hmm. areas mm -hmm. as well. So we've been we've been in uh, Vinton, Louisiana, and Leander, Louisiana, and then we've taken supplies uh, even down into Lake Charles, mm -hmm. Louisiana, mm -hmm. and done that. And so uh, and we've had volunteers that have helped us in Louisiana. 
who have come from Indiana, Illinois, Mississippi, and Tennessee, and even up into Ohio have responded and come down and worked with us in Louisiana. Wow. Yeah. That yeah. is awesome. Yeah. And so, again, it just, it, 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 it takes... It, well, let me, let me back up and say this. With everything that's went on with COVID, mm -hmm. we've had to work with a skeleton crew oh, I all imagine. these months because we've been in disaster basically since the last of February. Yeah. It's just been a different one in different places. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. uh, we have to get very creative in how, mm -hmm. we, in how we do all that mm -hmm. stuff. So if somebody wanted to volunteer, do they just call here and ask they can do for that. you? They, they, can, they can call. Show up? They or? can call. They can, they can log on to our website, Helping His Hands. Dot com mm -hmm. and they can send an email through there mm -hmm. and then a form will be sent back to them to fill out and everything like that uh, they can call they can stop by and and the cool thing about that is is um, we've had people who say well I'm not able to go on a trip like that and, you know mm -hmm. so I probably couldn't be used well we've got stuff for everybody I mean we're always looking for people who are willing to pray with people mm -hmm. we're always looking for folks who are willing to to come and be what we would what we would call our safety officer because when you're working in an area with equipment mm -hmm. and people you got to have somebody watching at all times what's going on if that makes sense but then of course here locally in our in our in our headquarters here in Vincent's we got the food pantry, we got the food depot, we've got the wheelchair ramps that we build, we got the auto ministry that we do. Um, we do um, disaster kits that we take to these areas to give out to families in need. Mm -hmm. Every one of those kits get a personal letter in them. So that way, when that person opens that up, they realize it wasn't just thrown together. That somebody, even though it's someone they may never meet, mm -hmm. that person was thinking of them. That person was praying for them. Well, we so appreciate cool. that. We you appreciate. It. We're so trying. Cool. We're trying. To, we're trying to make a difference. You know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, people ask all the time. They they say because because what's crazy is we took our very first group of college students from Vincent University mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. 1993 to a disaster, and we've been doing it ever since. And people ask me all the time, did you know in 93 that you were going to start this and do this? And I said no. The whole reason we were going was to help people come on a yeah. trip with us and realize. There's more, there's more to the Christian life, the Christian mm -hmm. faith, mm -hmm. than just saying, hey, I go to church on Sunday. Because I've said it for a long time, if going to church makes you a Christian, then going in a garage makes you a car. And we know that doesn't work. <laughs> and so we've been showing, not just students, but anybody who goes on a trip, that, that Jesus wants a relationship with us. Mm -hmm. You know, people ask me all the time, why, why do you keep doing this? And I say, here's the deal. Here's the deal. First off, I truly believe that mankind is made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. If we believe that, then what that means is that every person that we reach out to and that we help, we're ultimately helping Jesus. That's why we do what yep, we do. Yep. And a lot of times, people in disasters, the only Jesus or God they see is the Jesus and exactly. God in you. Exactly. Our mission so. statement is bringing hope and a hand of service to those in need. And that's what we try to do every single time we go out of this building yeah. to a different disaster. Yeah. And the cool thing is we get to be a part of what Jesus is doing, even in the midst of those areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And kitchen was that not the coolest thing you ever saw the, the helping his hands disaster relief and they also have a food pantry down Vincent's Indiana Knox County Indiana if you get down that way stop by say hi to Jason Scott and Bill they are awesome okay
So now we're back in the kitchen. We are going to be making buttermilk biscuits. I found this recipe. Uh, I never could make biscuits until I found this recipe. I found this recipe on the back of a self-rising flour bag, bag of flour. So um, it's like it's butter, it's flour, it's milk, that's it. And a little bit of sugar. So we've got I'm doubling this recipe, so I've got four cups of flour in here, so normally two. I've got um, two tablespoons of sugar, so I'm doubling it, so there's four in there. And then we need some butter. Now this butter, it can be margarine, it can be butter, regular butter butter, it could be, it could also be shortening, it could be like Crisco shortening. Um, I just, you want it cold, and you want to chop it up, because um, we're going to be mixing this in here and then once we get this mixed then we're going to put it in the handy dandy KitchenAid and let it go and, and it's going to mix the milk in there so we don't have to do everything everything by hand. This part you could use a food processor which I do not have. I just haven't you know, found the need and uh, you know doing stuff by hand it I mean it the food processor comes in handy but this way I get my exercise and my doctors are off my butt <laughs> so um, you know there you go so then you take your pastry little pastry mixer thing and you just mix that together now it's going to take a little bit to get all the butter and the and the sugar and the flour mixed together. Whenever you get it mixed correctly, right, then it should like look like little little beads, like little peas. Okay, the size of little like peas that you green peas you eat, and you want this all mixed together. Pretty well, those little peas, like green peas, it's about that size. So once you get all that done, and be careful whenever you're taking the flour out or the butter out of this because it can cut your fingers. So, you know, safety, use a, a knife and scrape it out. And now we're going to get our KitchenAid and we're going to put this in here. And like I said, I doubled it, so there's four cups of flour. Two sticks of butter, four teaspoons of sugar, and we're going to add some milk. So we got a bread hook on there. We're going to shut this puppy. We're going to get this puppy going. Now it says three fourths to one cup of milk, but I eyeball it. You can eyeball it, and the more you do it, the more you can eyeball it, and it'll be fine. Okay, so you want to start out on slow, like one or two, and then once you get that in there, add some more milk as you go. You may have to scrape the sides down because there would be, would be flour in the bottom. So, and if it looks too soupy, add more flour. That's fine. And that will soak up that milk. So I think the milk is good. I think the milk is good. We may have to add some more flour to this because it's still pretty sticky. Add by the handfuls, put some in there, get this started again. And like I said, you can start, whoa, see what I'm doing? <laughs> it went crazy. So start on like one or two, you can always turn it up if you need to. Like I said, if it it's too soupy, add flour. Don't add any more milk. Just add a little bit of flour. Okay. Now it's gonna it's gonna uh, come up in a ball. See, and it still needs a little more flour. Woo! And you know I needed to get my apron, but I'm old and forget things. Okay. So we're going to look at this. See, it's starting to come together. So, it should, see, it's starting to look like this. Okay. Now you can stick your hands in there, make sure there's no 
flour in the bottom. We're going to put just a tad bit more flour, just a little bit more flour in there because it's still kind of sticky. Okay, and use your clean hand. Okay, so a couple more handfuls and then that ought to do it for that part. Okay, now you're going to need when you roll this out, because we're going to roll it out, and we're going to put it on uh, cookie sheets, we're going to bake it, that should do it. See how it comes out like that? That's perfect. Okay, take your hook off. You can take the hook off before or after. Put that in the sink. Okay. So then you want to spread some flour out on your table. Now since this is double, we'll probably do half and half. Now you don't want, since you put extra flour in there, you do not want to fold in a whole lot of flour, okay? So once that's done, flour on the rolling pin, and we're going to roll this out to about yay big, okay? And you're going to, you know, you can use a, a biscuit cutter. If you don't have a biscuit cutter handy, you can use a cup. I use a coffee cup, my Santa cup. Now see, these are pretty big, and they're going to double, usually they double in size. And you get your cookie sheet. Now you do not have to butter this unless you absolutely want to, okay? Because there's, you know, like I said, there's a lot of butter in there. So just put them on there. Okay. So, there you go. And we're going to finish this off and then we're going to put them in the oven. We'll show you what they look like. So they're going to look like this. When they go in the oven, you can put butter on top of it before it goes in the oven. That will also make them uh, soft and fluffy as well. So we're going to clean up. We're going to finish doing this, clean up our mess, come back, and we're going to have biscuits. So stick around. Pardon my shirt. <laughs> I was cleaning up and washing up some dishes. And here are the biscuits. Now I put, uh, whenever I put them out on the, finish putting them on the cookie sheet, I did put some butter. I love Kerrygold butter. Excellent. Real butter shipped in from Ireland. It's Ireland cows. I love it. And here you go. So this is simple, easy. Anybody can do it. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Bon appetit.